Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining us for a Learn Pro Poker study group uh, here at Rec Poker. It's the fourth Saturday of the month, so we are getting together to talk about the Learn Pro Poker training video that was released earlier this month. This month, it was all about bankroll management and game selection with Ryan LaPlante. And I see we're just getting a new member showing up here into the chat. So uh, this month, we're looking at uh, Ryan LaPlante's thoughts on game selection and bankroll management. He talks a lot about different sites you might play online. Uh, he talks about uh, buy-ins. Uh, we use a tournament uh, variance calculator and a few things like that to just talk about it uh, generally. Um, hello, Gennaro. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, Dave and Eric, uh, Gennaro is a new premium member. And uh, this is one of the first uh, study sessions we're getting them out here for us. So we're going to talk a little bit about uh, bankroll management and game selection. So here we are. Um, did anyone get a chance to watch the video? Uh, I actually watched it a while back. Oh, yeah. So I, 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 so I didn't rewatch it. So just I watched it yesterday and a little bit this morning. But uh, yeah. So so you guys know it. So it basically is Ryan LaPlante taking questions and going through some slides of his own. Um, and if you're, if people are watching the study group at home, uh, you can go and check out that video in the uh, uh, learning with partners section of the archive here. And um, one of the things that he talks about different poker sites online to play on. I don't know if you guys want to get into that when it comes to game selection or other kinds of game selection. We're all in different parts of the world. Um, Dave, you and I are in uh, middle on middle of Canada. Uh, Gennaro, you're on the East Coast. Uh, Eric, you're on the West Coast in the U.S. So um, what sites do you guys play on and what sites do you like and what do you like about them and that kind of thing? Um, so I, I'm mainly a, an ignition grinder. Um, so what I like about it, it's a soft site. Mm-hmm. Um, in that the player pool are just a lot of a lot of fun players that aren't studied and maybe aren't taking the aren't studied in the game and so are taking lines that a study player wouldn't that perfect it, yeah that's um so <laughs> that we can exploit those those lines um the other thing i like is that they do have uh, full hand histories available uh so uh, 24 hours after you play on on there, if you you can go and download um, and see everybody's hands, so you can see if you you got bluffed or 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 you know you made a good fold and etc. And and so that you know I'm using Park Tracker Four and um, keeping track of those hands, and you can I I, sh I should do a better job of using that data, but at least that data is available for me. Um, I love. Um, I've dabbled in ACR. I've um, have some money there, played a little bit. Um, it is a tougher site. Uh, I do think they've improved their software. I know like um, back in 2020 when I was, you know, when everybody was doing more online, um, it was one of the sites that I was kind of hesitant because I would always see on Twitter and everywhere people complaining, "Oh, it crashed again," and and so I think right they I had some that. they had some issues there, but they seem to have um, it still occasionally happens, but definitely less less often. So um, so the software is good, and they they keep upgrading it, so that's good. But uh, there, I don't like the tournament late reg. They have oh, this oh, yeah. ridiculous like six hour, eight hour late. I mean, just it's just crazy. It's just yeah. like uh, so, uh, and there's larger fields, which uh, again, in Brian's video, he mentions like, hey, you have more variance in larger fields. You know, smaller fields are are less variance. So, uh, and, and people I know a lot on the community, they love ACR and they do these huge field things, but but you know, I. A nice 100, 200 field where, you know, you, you get top 10%, you know, you just top 20 and you get some money. And yeah, it's, I kind of, I kind of like that sweet spot. That's actually one of the things um, Gennaro and I were talking about earlier, about kind of like lowering variance, because we both play on poker stars. And yeah. so we play MTTs with very large field sizes. And it's a great, you know, it's that take a shot mentality where you can get a huge multiplier on your buy-in if you win. 
but um, you just have to, you have to fade so many more coin flips just to get to the money and then to get to the final table. Here, let's let Tim in here, he's just arriving. Um, that it really increases, it adds a lot of variance to the game. So one of the things I was gonna talk about today, thanks for that segue, Eric, is um, choosing smaller field sizes, choosing tournaments with smaller field sizes to decrease your variance it does kind of lower the ceiling on how big an outlier win you can have, but it really decreases your risk of ruin. And you can use um, variance calculators online to see how this is all modeled out. Uh, Ryan does a really good job in the video of just going through a few examples and something as simple as going down in field size just means that you get to kind of appreciate your actual skill edge uh, a little more regularly. It was one of the things that stood out when I watched the video for me that I should have uh, known more or thought about more, but because uh, I do play on poker stars too, and I do tend to gravitate towards the the big series that they have, which have right. ridiculously huge fields. And then I, you know, do run deep on one or two and then I get hooked on them for a while. So. <laughs> yeah no kidding but it's probably a bad idea that's fair i but I, you know i get the most enjoyment from those deep runs in those big tournaments so mm -hmm. i'm not sure how to how much to weigh my uh you know playing it to get the ad enjoyment versus playing it the uh bankroll management way mm -hmm. you know the uh somebody and i who was this? I guess it was Gareth that said recently that sometimes the rec players aren't don't have a bankroll; they have a budget. Right. Yes. Exactly. I, exactly. I go on that theory. Yeah. I, I I definitely do. Yeah, that's right. And I think that's appropriate, right? Like it's a it's a hobby. It's something we'd be spending money on X amount of dollars to go to the movies every month, or to play golf, or to get fishing gear. Uh, repaired or you know whatever it is that you're doing um and poker is just one of those few hobbies that if you work at it and or get lucky it can turn into something that makes money instead of uh cost money every month so i think that's definitely true Th this subject comes up a lot in my coaching conversations with people because th there's this tension between kind of wanting to wanting to enjoy the hobby but also wanting to generate revenue from it, or at least to like defray your costs. And the thing that I always come back to is playing a mix, having sort of a sense of how you want to, wh whether you want to call it a budget or a bankroll, um, having a mix of kind of di different buy-ins within your range, and then also different field sizes, or even like personally, I like to play a lot of cash instead of small field tournaments, because I kind of get the same it's not really the same limited variance, but it's more like a smooth incremental growth rate as opposed to that old MTT chart, which can be a bit uh, nauseating from time to time. But uh, um, but the same would be true for like smaller field tournaments. So Tim says four out of the five last final tables he's made have been in 100 to 200 person fields. Right. And it's also a better training experience, honestly to progress to the final table in a small field tournament than to just keep kind of playing what feel like the endless early stages of the MTTs where, um, you know, when, by the time you finally do get deep, maybe, you know, you don't have the same kind of experience at the final table that you might if you'd played some of these smaller field tournaments. So let's, so where do we find smaller field tournaments like this if we want to play on them? Is it a question of, playing on different sites or playing like sit and goes like there's a sense of even the 90 or 180 man sit and goes being kind of a more disciplined game than other MTTs or like I know people have talked about how they feel like some of like the single table sit and goes have been sort of solved in a way because of the payouts are uh, it's all kind of fixed information if you guys experience that I see Tim saying the uh, GG turbos are usually pretty small. Mm -hmm. I 
I mean, for me, it's, you know, like I said, that's one of the things that attracts me to, to ignition is the smaller field sizes and the mm -hmm. limited uh, light reg. So um, what I, I like to do just to kind of gauge it is look at the buy-in versus the guaranteed. So that's how much you can see what the fields, what the predicted field size, right? If mm -hmm. the guarantee is, mm -hmm. you know, 4,000 and buy-ins 10, Ten dollars, and they they assume that there's a uh, you know there's four hundred people that's going to buy in more or less. Yep, good point. At, at least that much. So so you can get a even before you enter a tournament, you kind of get a feel for at least what the site thinks it's going to be, mm -hmm. and then they'll give you an indication of of what the field size is going to be. All right, there great... are some cap tournaments on. Uh... Poker stars, so they have like 360 max mm -hmm. or something like that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which that might be worth trying a few more of those. Yeah, I like that idea too. I think they have fewer payouts up top, but like it's closer to the 10% than some of the other ones are, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure whether I that's good or bad. My instinct is to not like that, but. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's another. Uh thing is sort of like finding that style of poker that suits you whether it's um like you know turbos or knockouts or um slow format or you know there's lots of different kinds of poker out there too and so finding a way that kind of suits your philosophy as a player uh tim says an easy way to see a smaller field is shorter late reg and smaller guarantee usually the way i track the way i track it is if the guarantee is two to four hundred times the buy-in yeah right that's yeah so that's that makes a lot of sense sort of estimating it off the buy-in size that that's a good way to think about it so um i play on or i haven't i've brought the last year's probably the year i played the least poker just with everything else i had going on i didn't have enough time to play as much as i'd like um, so I'm still just boring old playing on poker stars and ACR because they're the ones that <laughs> I've already got all my stuff preset on. I haven't been game selecting nearly as savvily as I would like to in the new, you know, landscape of, of online poker with GG and ignition and Bovada and all these other, uh, fun sites out there. I know some are more regulated than others. Um, Today, it's January 2022. So, Eric, you say you're playing on Ignition. We've talked about uh, Poker Stars and ACR. Um, is Ignition, just for our listeners at home, is, is, is Ignition something that you can only play from the States or can you play it internationally? I believe it's the player pool is uh, US and Australia. Ah. And it's, the, it's uh, an anonymized player pool. Is that right? Yes. Cool. And not in every state. So they avoid states that have some kind of regulation. Mm -hmm. So actually, if you're in Nevada, you can't play it or other states, like maybe New Jersey or something where you can play. There are regulated. So they don't want to con conflict. They kind of fill the market where there, there are no um, regulations for poker. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, because um, uh, Jamel... He's in New York and he can't play it. And right. I'm, always, I'm always telling him about the wild streets of, of ignition. And <laughs> he doesn't get to experience it for himself. That's funny. Um, what about uh, Tim? Where, what sites do you play on, or what other sites? Um, what other sites have people had some some experience or or some positive uh, experience playing on? I don't mind. I used to play on 888. They've got, a, they've got some fun. I mean, generally you want sites, if you're looking for good game selection, you want sites that have like sports betting associated with them. Um, other kind of like casino betting. You want people that are not poker experts coming over and playing poker. Ideally, you know, that's what game selection is all about. Uh, one site I forgot to mention is global. Yep. So they, <laughs> they have a unique thing where they, they have set it up as a sweepstakes model in order to be legal right. in the U.S. Yes. And um, um, <clears throat> so the downside, so the upside of Global is, again, it's it's a U.S.-facing site, so mm -hmm. the, the field is weaker, softer. Um, you can take notes on players. You do have uh, player names. So, um, but the downside is it's <clears throat> browser only, and 
the hand history is very limited. It's really not much. So you can't, it, it's not incorporated into any, as far as I know, any tracking software. So mm -hmm. like no HUD, no, no poker tracker, that type of thing. So um, it's kind of like a live experience where, you know, you do have a player name and you can type notes and, and note, <clears throat> note somebody's playing style, but it's not like you're, you're going to uh, be able to track a VPIP or, or anything like that. Right. So it does kind of depend on, like, I'm a very stat-based player. I like having my HUD up. And uh, so that kind of keeps me, as a default, playing on sites that I can use uh, my awesome HUD. Um, but I do think that I end up using that as a crutch. And I, that is not good for my development as a poker player when I play live. I'm definitely like missing skills that I would be practicing better in my online play if I played yeah, you know, anonymized I've, tables or things like I've that. I've heard more coaches lately say like, you know what? It's a useful guide, but don't get too involved in the HUD stats because you're the sample size you get on people isn't going to be that meaningful. Mm -hmm. Now that's another benefit of playing in smaller field tournaments. If you're playing in the same smaller field tournaments regularly, you're going to encounter the same regulars regularly. You'll accumulate stats on them more often, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so that is handy as well. And also like for cash games in particular, uh, you can end up spending hundreds and hundreds of hands at the same table with people uh, in the same sessions. And so that can become uh, helpful. I remember, <laughs> I remember when I first started using Poker Tracker, I was playing a lot of cash online and multi-tabling. And in the first few days after I had it set it up, there were a few of these players that I had like 4,000 hands on already. <laughs> I was like, wait a second, how could that possibly be? It's like, because they're on every table I'm playing. <laughs> so it, uh, when, you, when you start playing with the same players, it does make, um, does make a big difference. Uh, Tim's saying in the chat here, uh, what he hears from his international friends is, as far as soft sites, 888 and Unibet take the cake, but the software is kind of cruddy. And our determination for HUD in uh, Coach Gaz's coaching program, that's with um, Gareth James, is a min of 300 to 500 hands before you start making any assumptions. Yeah, yeah, hand sample size is a huge, uh, a huge case there. And it, you're, really, it, you're really unlikely to get post-flop any kind of frequencies or any kind of sample size that make a difference. Most of that stuff is going to aggregate pre-flop quickly and maybe some flop stuff but after that you really have to be playing a lot with people to get anything of value so so let's say someone was playing um mtts and and actually ryan does a great so ryan in the video ryan talks about if someone had like a two thousand dollar bankroll what kind of schedule he would want them to play and talks about sort of having like a lot of the tournaments being between like three and eight dollars with some like the big 11 some up to 1650 um but that basically he talked about 300 buy-ins having a risk of ruin that was not really acceptable to a professional player so 500 buy-ins was the amount that he would recommend as a pro. So that makes some assumptions about your win rate and the games that you're playing. But in the video, he goes through a couple um, examples of that, and you can see it better than I can explain. Uh, so I kind of like, this is the way that I talk about it as well, um, is having that kind of mix of buy-ins and then also that kind of mix of field sizes or um or game variants so what about you panel do you oh hello that's cute mine's mine's my guy doesn't make it up the stairs anymore so he's <laughs> he's stuck downstairs um as as recreational players you know i mostly um I mostly play just MTTs on Sundays and then the home games and then cash when I'm just playing for fun to kind of uh, fill some time around in the background. What do you guys often play tournament wise? And do you play a mix as well? Or do you just play something that you stick to? 
my main grind has been cash, um, but I will go on kind of spurts of MTTs. Mm -hmm. um, I'll play uh, like a nation. They have a couple free rolls that I'll end up playing. Um, and then uh, maybe I'll fire one or two MTTs a week, you know, just on a weekend. Um, so that, that's my main main grind. I again, I'll go into spurts where um, you know I'll, I'll play one of them, and then like, oh, this is fun, and then you know make it maybe make a deep run. It's like okay, let me fire up another, and um, so it, I kind of go spurts, and then you know for a couple of weeks, and then maybe run calls. Like okay, let's it's time to switch over to cash. So. Uh, I kind of switch it up. I mean, I like both. I probably, it probably in terms of developing a game is probably better to focus on one, mm -hmm. but in terms of fun EV, I, I think I like switching it up. I like the freedom of cash, but um, uh, Rec Poker is mainly a, a tournament based turn, uh, community. So, you know, I like to speak that language as well. So I, I and I do enjoy it. So, um, so I also enjoy the tournaments as well. Hmm. What about you, Tim? Well, I think uh, a lot of it is really based around like your volume. Um, so like if you're playing like say a couple times a week and you're playing 10 tournaments each session, then you should really probably stick to like a set. Like, you know, if you have a 2K bankroll, then you should stick to that like kind of two to $8 range and not get outside of that because you're going to experience more variance because the amount of volume you're putting in. Um, but for like, say like somebody like you, Jim, who plays, like you play on Sundays, you don't play, you know, a whole bunch of tournaments. Like, I think you can go a little bit above that and still like be sustainable. Um, like myself, like I usually play a couple times a week. Um, and like off a of 2k bankroll, like I tend to play, um like five to ten dollar tournaments but i also play i used to play like eight to ten tournaments at a time um now i'm playing like five or six and just seeing better production or uh, like a better term like better execution so i think it just depends too on like kind of what level your game's at like you also don't want to be playing too high for your skill level mm-hmm because I can play, you know, like, say, like, I'll just use last night, for instance. Like, last night, I think I played a total of eight tournaments, final table, three of them. Nice. And then um, cashed three others and then just missed the money in two others. But that was all, like, five of those, I think, were small field tournaments. And then right. the other couple were bounties. And so, like, the bounty ones that I didn't cash, I wasn't too upset about because I had already doubled my money before. Pretty uh, good night. Yeah, yeah, it was a decent night. I mean, they're not all <laughs> like that, obviously. Um, <laughs> but that's where, like, the small field stuff comes into play, too, because, um, like, I almost use small field as my day savers, in a sense. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, I have a lot of days that get saved from the small field stuff because you can be playing just excellent in the monster. You know, you've got 5,000 entrants. You're playing excellent. And then you run kings and aces. Mm -hmm. And it's just, I, I don't know what it is, just of, like, the math behind it. But the variance is just so much higher in those tournaments. But you have to see so many more hands and you have to play for so much longer versus, like, a small field tournament. It might go for three, maybe four hours. By the time you get in the money, there's 27 people left. And then it's really not that hard. Like, you're like, okay, like, I'm guessing I have a skill edge over at least a half these people. So I can kind of be more selective now and be like, okay, like, uh, this guy's three betting me and I have ace 10 off. You know what? Like, early on, I might call, but I'm just going to let this one go and wait for somebody else to make the mistake, in a sense. And just find yourself like, I the other night, I made two final tables. I remember I posted something in my deep runs thing with some buddies and I was like, Oh, you know, 10 people left, but I'm needing a prayer. You know, I had like three big blinds. And then on the other table, one guy was a PKO. He knocked out three players at once. 
And I was like, what are they doing going all in with me at three big blinds? Like, and instantly like got seventh. So I think that's key too, is like just studying ICM mm. and knowing kind of where you're at and what to do, because especially in like the lower, lower buy-in stuff, you know, like the two to $10 range, people don't study ICM all that much. So in a sense, you're going to have just that much more of an advantage if you do study it and recognize like, okay, like, you know, I've got next to nothing here, but it's almost like satellite play. Like, oh, like I just got to wait for somebody else to make the mistake first in a sense. Now that's, we talked about this uh, last week with uh, Rob because uh, Rob Washam is a golfer. And uh, we were saying that in a way it's like golf. If you play enough holes, it's basically the person who's going to win is the one who just makes the fewest mistakes or the smallest mistakes. It's not about making perfect shots all the time. It's just about avoiding the mistakes. And when you, that's part of what game selection is about too. If you play in games where people are making ICM errors, then, you know, everyone else at the benefit at the table benefits from those errors. So uh, you're just much more likely to be able to, it might even feel like getting lucky, but what you're really doing is just, being more skilled than your opponents and capitalizing on their, on their mistakes. Tim, I like this notion of being like the day saver. I actually think of it um, as like a bankroll builder. I totally mm -hmm. think about cash games and small field tournaments as the way that I build my bankroll. And then I kind of invest that bankroll in large field MTTs to try and bink a big one. <laughs> right. That's totally, uh, whether I've, whether I've like co consciously made that decision or not, that's definitely how I approach it um, for and sure. Then, <clears throat> and then another thing, like we've kind of talked about, um, I know Gareth has kind of touched on this a little bit, um, but it's, don't be afraid to invest in yourself either. Like if you want to play like something bigger, mm -hmm. like every once in a while I'll play the one Oh nine on Sundays. Um, there's this one tournament that I like, it's a one Oh nine buy it, but it, it usually has anywhere from 800 to a thousand entrants. So it's still kind of smaller for a Sunday tournament, but you know, so what I'll do is I'll just send myself a hundred dollars on the account specifically for that tournament and then what I tend to do, and some people do it differently, but like what I'll do is when I cash it, because I have cashed it a few times and ran deep in it a couple times, I send the money back to my account plus 20%. So it's like nice. I staked myself. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And then, you know, you're kind of padding your bank account a little bit, but you're also padding your bankroll. Um, and so like, it's kind of one of those things where like, if you do want to play something bigger, like you know, if you're not like trying to burn up your bankroll, like say you have like a thousand dollar bankroll, but you want to try this one or nine tournament or play two fifty dollar tournaments today just to try and get that bigger score, send yourself a hundred bucks and take the shot. <laughs> yeah. But when I do you think cash, taking a shot, send yourself some money back. Yeah. No, taking a shot for sure. Yeah. So, so let me ask you this, Tim. Do you have a separate bank account that's your bankroll bank account? Uh, no. I usually just keep my bankrolls on the sites. Um, okay. So what you then, consider your bankroll is on the site and then whatever is off the site is your life roll. Uh, yeah. Or I guess like my poker stuff um, mm -hmm. is all in crypto as well. Like, so okay. I'll pull it, I'll pull it off and put it in crypto. Okay. Um, and then I use that to manage my poker bankroll. Um, yeah. but like, say for like the one Oh nines, like I'll per pull that out of my personal account and send that not, not out of the crypto or anything. Okay. Yeah. Cause Tommy Angela says, you know, you're, you're, there's imaginary line between your, your bankroll and your life. I mean, <laughs> right, it's, right. it's really all in your mind. Um, yeah. I mean, there are things that you can do physically to try to also delineate it. And I actually do have a separate bank account that I've, designated for get okay, is my poker bankroll and then i do have a separate crypto account this is, mm. my, this is my this is my uh, bankroll crypto account where as opposed to my you know investment crypto account oh yeah that's smart i've never thought about doing the yeah, exactly. separate bank account that's just what i've always used my crypto for mm. i'm like oh okay like eh, i'll just yeah. keep do that and then yeah no that's a good idea i like well that. 
you know, I, I'm a life knit. So it's all about like managing fees and stuff effectively too, right? Like you don't want to be necessarily moving stuff around, paying fees on it or having multiple accounts with like a monthly fee and stuff like that. So you got to find the right balance. I yeah. do. I, I also, I have a bank account that I just use for poker winnings. And uh, that's sort of like how I keep track of it. Um, Cause live stuff, I'm just not as diligent a record keeper when it comes to the live play. Cause I'm so lazy from playing online all the time. It all just handles itself. Um, so I do kind of, I do kind of rely on the, uh, having that one segregated account just to track everything. And then I know what's in all my different online accounts, of course. Um, well, that's easy for me. I don't ever make any money lives. <laughs> <laughs> that is easy for record keeping. I'm going to look into that. I'm going to look into that. Ease yeah, of management is big for me yeah. in 2022. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> um so Gennaro we've been talking about um y- y- trying to reduce variance and trying to uh, actually kind of realize our our edge um you're mostly playing on poker stars what are the what are the fields in the those ones that we've been looking at in those morning tournaments do you recall I don't so yeah it's the, the 22 dollar I think it gets up to about 1500 2000 people and then the 1650 um, that gets bigger, three to four thousand, I think. So Jesus. it's crazy. Yeah, uh, it's a lot of. Well, you've seen some of the flips, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, it is. And there's definitely and, there's there's players there's bad players in both of those tournaments. And there's yeah, and there's like a, you know, and yeah, it's huge gap between what I should be winning and or yes how much i should be losing and how much i'm actually losing <laughs> yeah we, we were looking at Gennaro's uh, graph uh recently and his his mm-hmm. expect he's running way under expected and uh it's oh, like happen. yeah no it will yeah it, yeah. it, it will but what um, happens is uh, like you know i lose a, a stupid hand where i'm way ahead and then it just cascades from there i just i, I get really pissed off and, <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I, then I, you know, I start doing stupid things, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the field size is interesting too because they, they are big, right? And right. Like I've tried the sit and goes before, but a lot of them you just you have to sit and wait, <laughs> right? Right. Because they don't they don't fill up that yep. fast. Yep. Right. So um, that's why I like the the scheduled tournaments, yes. right? But they they tend to be a lot. A lot bigger, at least on poker stars, they're huge, mm-hmm. kind of at, at, at those buy ins, anyway. And I also like when I'm, it's funny, when I'm, when, when I'm looking for those like big shot tournaments to take, I actually, um, filter by by field size because i want to take a shot in the biggest possible ones but i noticed that the like the big 11 the big 1650 the bounty builders those ones tend to have larger field sizes than just the other unbolded normal tournaments that run during other times so maybe part of the strategy could involve just playing in like less exciting tournaments that uh yeah have a smaller I, field size there yeah. the opposite of what i do like i go straight for the red ones you should maybe we should go away from the red ones. Yeah. that's what i I think that's true i think that's true because because the red ones the red ones is exactly what i'm thinking of dave yeah um, those are the ones that are like promoted those are the ones that everybody so there's a big field size you know there's a big guarantee um not only are those the ones that all the like better players want to get into for the same reason um but they're going to have larger field sizes and that sort of thing so maybe we should be just kind of like going in the other direction and searching for some of those not even not red but maybe not even bold you know just the real maybe like not even italicized ones and just like some of those real boring ones that's crazy talk (laughs) except the bad players what what which one are the bad players? Again? Yeah, that's true. Well, that, that's that's true. true, right? But the, I, I think the I big think ones are where all the weekend too. warriors go, right? Right, right. Yeah. But here's the golden question. Would you rather play against bad players or good players? Bad mm. players, for sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm the opposite. Yeah. I would much rather play against people who know what they're doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the uh, pure east. The pure me. east. <laughs> That's right. Why is that? Why is that, Tim? Um, for a simple reason, I don't want to three bet jam you for like 30 big blinds with ace king and have you call me with queen 10 off and then get <laughs> the there. 10 every time. 
but you're ahead. Why not? <laughs> yeah, you're ahead. But I don't win those. <laughs> <This is Yeah. laughs> you, sh- you should be winning them about 70% of the time. <laughs> I lose them probably 70% of the time. Yeah. Well, I, actually, <laughs> I actually calculate this uh, sometimes when I'm really tilted throughout the day. I'll like yeah. you know, calculate, like I'll pull up my little notepad and I'll just put H <laughs> King in there. And I'll put times lost with. Oh yeah, I just do. Yeah, do a and just start tallying. And, uh, like, it, is that it's, helpful? It's yeah, it really helps my mindset out on knowing that you know I just lose flips all the time. But that is that's what's happening to me, and somewhat anyway, right? And like you, you've seen it, Jim. When we look at like my database, it's there are hands like Ace Queen that you know I'm negative on. Right? right that you should be winning with that i'm just not winning with them right and i'm not saying i don't ever make mistakes but there are times no we've looked at there's like a lot of the, you're you're you know. you're you're objectively running bad like it's yeah, yeah which which is you know it's comforting but it doesn't actually make us feel any better at the table yeah when it's happening yeah. <laughs> right? but it's also frustrating when you're trying to play properly yeah and you know improve your play and you know the results don't don't yeah, reflect that. that. Then you start Same then thing. you start experimenting a little bit, and you start doing things you shouldn't be doing. True, right? Which is what what kind of what, what I tend to do? What for the rest of the gang here? What's worked? Because I know we've all been in that spot. What's worked for us in the past when we're in that? Uh, you know, it's not even a downswing so much as just you're like on the wrong side of variance and feels like nothing's yeah. working. What 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 can we do to to help in those in those times? Um, what I did, so I actually went through like a massive downswing, like at the beginning of last summer, it was like a 200 tournament downswing. <laughs> um, it was like, I had some min caches mixed in there, but other than that, it was just brick after brick after brick. And we were looking over my stats and seeing what I was doing wrong. And like, for the most part, like, yeah, I was making some mistakes here and there, but for the most part, I was playing well, I just couldn't win anything Mm -hmm. and what i found is during that time though i was also playing like 75 percent big field tournaments um so we flopped that so i started playing 75 percent small field tournaments with only a couple shots in the big ones each week and then i also actually dropped down because i think at the time i was playing like 20 to 30 dollar buy-ins um i actually dropped down to 10 to 16 dollar buy-ins um and then I ended up once I got to like a hundred or 150 tournament downswing, I think I dropped back down into like the low micro area, like uh, playing six to $10. And then just basically from there battled my way out. But in a sense, when you're used to playing $30 tournaments and now you're playing a $6 tournament, you're no longer, um, mm lighting your bankroll on fire in a sense like now i'm getting six tournaments for every one i was getting before true and then once i got out of it and started winning again i kind of went back up into the same that i was playing before and i like that you've got that kind of like band of buy-ins and you sort of like just move up and down you know like you know where your comfort area is i'm the same way and and i think i think that's really smart like i i don't i'm i mostly don't play tournaments lower than like six dollars i'll play some of the five dollar ones if if they've got a big overlay or something like that and then i don't usually go above uh the 22s and i don't usually honestly don't go i usually don't go above the 1650s either um my abi is right around 11 i like that 11 dollar tournament i find that's the bar, big field ones tend to have a high enough prize pool that it's exciting but it's still a good mix of uh good and bad players interesting i i'm similar range but i tend to vary it more i I want if i just if i don't have much money on the site all of a sudden and then find myself playing these one dollar things and for a while i enjoy it i run deep in that but usually i want to shoot myself by the end <laughs> yeah right <laughs> yeah 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 you bink it for 20 bucks you're like yeah exactly. i spent eight hours yeah, for 20 bucks really good, but- <laughs> it's actually it's it's actually kind of demoralizing sometimes yes, isn't yes. it yeah, yeah yeah i mean if you think of it in terms of hourly you're like oh great 10 cents an hour um, the way that you can kind of get out of that mindset um 
this is something me and Gareth worked on with me a lot because when I first started, I was playing micros and I would say the same thing. What he drilled in my head was don't look at it in terms of dollars. Just quit mm-hmm. doing that. Look at it in terms of buy-ins. Mm-hmm. So you play a $1 tournament and yeah, you win $30. Okay. Well, you've just won 30 buy-ins. Mm-hmm. Now you do that 15 more times and that's 150 buy-ins, you know? that it's just a kind of a different way of looking at it because like, if you really think about it, like, yeah, okay. You play a hundred field, $16 tournament and you win 160 bucks. Like in reality, like you just 10 extra money. Like that's not that Mm -hmm. great. You know, (laughs) but if you look at it like, Oh, I just made 10 buy-ins, you know, in five hours or whatever, like, okay. Like that's more doable. Yeah. My uh, response to the downswings, uh, I'm not sure it's advisable for anyone, but the, what I tend to do is give up for a while and start play, start to try to build up ridiculous amounts of play money. <laughs> That's been a winning strategy for you, Dave. <laughs> until, uh, until some big series draws me back in. <laughs> so... I do have five billion dollars in play money. But- he does. He's not exaggerating. He's loaded in play money. It's ridiculous. So one thing I again, it kind of like what they said it might not be the best, but I'll actually switch sites. Sure. <laughs> I'll just like like this morning. I was just getting getting hammered in in ignition and just like uh what what am i i mean i was trying to be patient and then i i built up it's like okay here i come and then i just punted i I made a mistake right there's there's these bad players and the one good player three bet me and i'm like oh i'm gonna play against him like (laughs) right the one good player at the table and i decide to to hey stand that's like that's a game selection leak too right that's what we're talking about yeah 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 yeah. i mean that's a hand that's a like strategy yeah, so anyway I, I switched over to global firsthand i get queens against kings <laughs> and i bink a queen and, <laughs> and i double up i was like okay right. life is good again <laughs> <laughs> so i don't you know just the psychology of just switching sites and yeah like, yeah and, and i, I happen to run lucky but it just i don't know uh, I, I, I kind of do that. It's I just I go to the casino and play blackjack. I just completely switch the game. Yeah, <laughs> whenever, oh, whenever I, I lose in poker, I win in blackjack. So yeah, yeah. I'm like, you know, at least I made some money. <laughs> hey, if you're good at blackjack, go for it. Yeah. You guys that play on multiple sites, it, it just I just remembering something from a long time ago now that uh, you know I used to play full tilt a lot, and then uh, yep, I got uh, I played in that. 10 20 dollar range and, and then uh i was big in the poker road forums and they started playing their home games on some weird sites like broadway tables and juicy steaks and <laughs> right i remember juicy steaks so i ended up with a little bit of money on some of those sites and then i started playing these 30 30 dollar tournaments on them and felt really comfortable it was mm-hmm. like it was obvious that the one that was softer and yes do you when you guys talk about being softer, do you play at different buy-in levels when you find that or when you go to those sites than you do on the other sites or I don't Pro- know. Probably. Yeah. I mean, I, I'd advise I, it. You know. I mean, you can, I mean, I would say stay within your bankroll slash budget. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, but for example, on ignition, I've found it's like, if you go up to like, you know, I normally go eleven dollars. I've done. I've have bumped up to like thirty, thirty dollars, and it's like there's still bad players. <laughs> there's enough. I mean, it wasn't like I. You know, you think ah, oh, three times buy in, but it's like it's still not. You know, it's not a a one k. It's still not like right. this, this crushing. You're still, you probably will get a lower percentage. You know, instead of like. 50% bad player, maybe it's 30% bad players, but they're still in there. There's still like bad players in there. You nailed it, Eric. That's it. Like we talked about this on a podcast recently. It's just a question of like proportionally how many good players to bad players are there. There's always going to be good. There's there's good players rocking the micros. They're not doing it from first world countries, but somewhere where the cost of living is really low. And, you know, 
an 80 right. cent buy-in matters. Um, there are excellent players rocking the micros and there's fish all the way up. There's whales all the way up to the highest levels, ego players, you know, um, some of the worst I, players I, are play at the yes, highest level. Yes, some of the worst players. That's right. When when I play cash, occasionally, you know, I'll, I'll shot take and I'll sit the table. I'm like, this guy is so bad. But, <laughs> but it's it's players that have a lot of money, right? A yeah. lot of disposable income. You know, it's the business, multimillionaire businessman just wants to blow off steam. Right. So he's not interested in playing 10 cent or even the right. dollar or right. even the dollar or even the two dollar he wants to go as high as you know five dollar ten dollar you know that he wants to do it 500 nl 1k nl mm -hmm. but but you have to balance is now all the really good players <laughs> yes who can afford it are up there as well trying to pick off the whales yeah i don't remember if it was john or rob uh that said recently that Really, the if you're in a, if you go into a poker room and they've got one two two five and ten twenty five, the one game you don't want to play is the two five game, because the uh, the people that are playing in that one are disciplined enough <laughs> to be playing the uh, uh, the higher stakes, but um, not egoed enough to play the really high stakes. And uh, so you're gonna get you're gonna get well maybe that's not a good example, but I think you know. What uh, I mean. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's definitely uh, bad players at every uh, at every table. So what um, we're coming up on the end of the hour. Uh, what kind of strategies can we employ? What kind of lessons uh, have we learned? What kind of questions do we still need to ask on this subject before we can tie a bow on this and uh, head off into unprecedented glory in 2022? I think the larger point is like. You know, we love talking strategy. What would you do with Ace King? What's the best way to three bet? But I mean, there are metagame considerations like how do you handle it? Do you have a bankroll or budget? How should I manage it? How do I manage it versus my buy in level versus, you know, what site you, you play? Because mm -hmm. um, uh, there's a lot of options, and, you know, find the option that's best for you that suits your game the best. Yeah, I like that. And I like the idea of kind of deciding what suits you best from a standpoint of like risk management and uh, how, you know, the field size versus variance thing really does factor in a lot. And also just the average buy in that notion of having a range where you get kind of play a lot down here, you take some good tournaments here and you give yourself permission to take a shot up here occasionally. Um, I think that's good for I think that's good for your your poker soul too you know and it should and it should kind of make the entire thing appear less kind of stressful too um because just to have a plan where you know um uh you've kind of got <clears throat> you've kind of isolated your variables a bit at least and you know what you're getting into eric you look like you heard something funny there yeah no i was just i was uh, i was looking at i was just browsing on the web uh, and then i saw a uh, um uh, an ad for global poker, which which I play on, is like, hey, stressful day at work, go home and play, you know, you know, f you know, decompress with playing global poker, and <laughs> and I know a lot of times we talk about just how stressful and aggravated <laughs> and frustrated we get with this game, and I'm like. We're supposed to be, you know, yeah. I, none of us are. This. We should be enjoying this. We <laughs> we chosen this to do in our spare time, right? It's not. We're not. At least I'm not using it to pay my bills. Yeah. Uh, um, um, I'd like it to be a nice side hustle, but it, it's not there yet. But <laughs> it should be fun if we chose this voluntarily. It should be fun. So. Amen. That's that's my mantra for everything to do with 2022. If it's not fun or making literally a million dollars, then why in God's name are we spending our time on this? You don't know how much time you have left. Use it on things that are extremely fun or extremely valuable. That's the, that's all I can say. All right. Well, uh, thanks gang. We had a really good conversation today. I think you know, I'm, I'm going to try and find, I'm going to try and develop some, uh, I'm going to play on some new sites this year, I think, and try and chase some of these soft fields, get out yeah, of my you comfort choices, zone. Not, I know it's like Americans. I'm just, I, I'm such a turtle. I just got, I get, I get comfortable. I get comfortable and I don't want to move, but I, I got to do some exploring and find some of these soft fields. 
<laughs> I've been meaning to play GG, but I don't think that's a soft field, though. It's the people fight on there, and it's more like similar to Poker Stars, right? Yeah, I, I, like I heard it. mixed reviews. You said you like it, Tim? Yeah. Um, it depends on what you're going after, though. Like, if you play, like, oh. turbos and stuff. I see um, what you said. GG. Or, or, <laughs> okay. <laughs> or, like, the, the smaller field stuff. I don't know. I, I played some of the smaller field stuff in, like, the kind of lower, like, $5 range. And I, I think they're pretty soft. Um, it's like anywhere else you go. Like, the lower buy-in you go, just the worse the play gets. Yep. Um, I know. The more errors people make. I have one friend that played micros on it his whole first year just to build his bankroll. And now he's playing $30 buy-ins um, cause he has the bankroll for it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the bounty, I like the bounty schedule on there. It's got a really nice bounty schedule. Something that we don't really see like with other sites like ACR and global and, I don't know about ignition, but I just know those two sites, their bounty schedule is like, it's there, but it's like one out of every eight tournaments is a bounty. Mm. Yeah. Poker it's, star is moving very bounty heavy. There's a lot of bounty stuff on poker. Stars they're, right they're very popular um, mm -hmm. everywhere, mm. both the States. Mm. I like them personally. I like the, um, I like <laughs> taking people out of tournaments. <laughs> right. <laughs> And you get money for it, uh, right? Or exactly. That. How could you? How could you argue with that? Plus, I like shoving as a small stack, so um, it's just it's like built for me. How can you? How can you? Right. Can't, can't beat it. All right, gang. Well, um, I think uh, we're taking off. Uh, we didn't do a, the focus this month with um, Chris because he was getting through a bunch of other stuff. So I think we're not going to do a study group next Saturday, but we are going to get together for uh, Gareth James in February and there'll be another LPP one in February as well. So uh, make sure you, you're part of that group um, over on the left there on that red bar. I'll send out a little reminder and thanks everyone for joining this uh, Saturday. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you again soon. Bye.